What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number 14 of the Everything NYJ podcast. I am, as always, your host, Liam. And thank you guys for joining me today. This was a big week in the NFL. It was franchise tag week. And the Jets have done something that they haven't done in a really long time. It's been years since the Jets have used their franchise tag. And this week, the Jets franchise tag safety Marcus May. It's worth about $10.5 million. And Marcus May is coming off of the best season of his career, two sacks and two interceptions this past season. Marcus May played really well this season. I absolutely love that the Jets franchise tagged Marcus May. He's 28 years old. He's on the older side of the NFL. I like it because there's no long-term commitment here. Like I said, he's coming off of his best season. Let's see if next year he could run it back and have a better season. He's going to be in a new system, new coaches. Can he top this past season? And I know Marcus May isn't too happy about this. Him and his agent wanted a long-term deal. They wanted a big contract. They want big money. I don't think Marcus May is really worth too much more than $10.5 million. I think that's his max. I'm not willing to give Marcus May $11, $12, 13 $14 million. I'm sorry, I'm not. If it was up to me, I'd give Marcus May about $8 million. Maybe nine tops. 10.5, I think, is very reasonable for Marcus May. He's not one of the best safeties in the league. I've talked about this in previous episodes. He's very good for the Jets. He's a good fit on the Jets. And he's serviceable for the Jets. But we don't know what his value would be in free agency. I really think that Marcus May wanted to, you know, look around and shop himself in free agency and see what the market for him is like. But I, I'm just not comfortable giving Marcus May a big contract. And I understand that the Jets are trying to do the right thing. We have argued and complained as Jets fans for so long that the Jets don't keep their own players. So they're doing that this year with Marcus May. However, I just... I just don't think he's worth that big contract. I, I'm sorry, I don't. And he wants that. Marcus May and his agent, especially his agent, he went on Twitter and he basically blasted the Jets a couple weeks ago, last week. And Joe Douglas actually acknowledged it during his press conference and he said, it's just business, it's negotiating, it's the way the NFL operates. Which it's true. Business isn't really done privately anymore. A lot of contracts negotiating, that's all public. You see players all the time going on social media, expressing their frustrations towards a certain team, a certain organization. It's the way it is. I'm hoping that Marcus May, I'm hoping he outdoes himself. I want him on the Jets. I just don't want to pay him a ton of money. The term Jet for life, that's really been thrown around a ton. And I really think that Joe Douglas wants to make Marcus May a Jet for Life, but I don't think Joe Douglas is interested in paying Marcus May just as much as I'm not interested in it. Worst case scenario is Marcus May, let's say he doesn't improve this season. Maybe he stays the same. Maybe he regresses a little bit. But let's say he doesn't want to be on the Jets. So he leaves or whatever. Worst case scenario, we draft the safety next year. In this draft class, I want to go offensive heavy this year. Quarterback, running back, not really running back, actually. See, the thing is, I don't want to draft really a running back. If anything, I want to sign a free agent running back. But yeah, you know, so maybe quarterback, wide receiver, offensive lineman, tight end. I really want to go offensive heavy in this draft. And then next year, I wouldn't mind going defensive heavy. In theory, the offense should be improved. If we go offensive heavy, the offense should be much better improved. Next year, I want to go maybe defensive heavy. Maybe we get a defensive lineman. We might have to draft a linebacker because C.J. Mosley's coming back this year, and he's a big question mark. C.J. Mosley's now two years removed from football. We don't know what he's going to be. We don't know what kind of shape he's going to be in. We might have to draft a linebacker. Maybe we draft a corner. Maybe we have to draft a safety. I think by 2023, one year, you know, 2021, we're going offensive heavy. 2022, we're going defensive heavy. 2023, things should really start to pick up for the Jets. 
I think that we could start getting some luxury picks. Maybe we could go running back in the first round if we have to. Maybe we could go tight end in the first round. Something like that. Something that's not a top priority. Like it's going to be in these next couple years. Because the Jets, the Jets have a ton of holes on this team. There's certain positions that are more valuable than others. They're called premium positions. The Jets have holes at almost all of them right now. But I don't think that the Jets are far off from getting back to being a competent organization, a competent team. I think the Jets are on the right track. Joe Douglas is on the right track. I think he's bringing in the right coaching staff. And the Johnsons really have to trust and let Joe Douglas run the team. And I think so far, Joe Douglas is doing a pretty good job with it. Like I said, by 2023, things should start to improve. We should start being able to take some luxury picks and really start to turn this team around. But anyway, so how does these other franchise tags affect the Jets? There was a lot of players that the Jets are interested in in free agency. Allen Robinson being one of the biggest ones. Allen Robinson was the number one wide receiver that I wanted to get in this offseason. Obviously, Allen Robinson got franchise tagged by the Chicago Bears. He's out. Chris Godwin, he was another big wide receiver that was supposed to hit free agency. He got tagged by Tampa Bay. I was really hoping Allen Robinson was my number one. Chris Godwin was my number two. I don't think Chris Godwin ever was going to come to the Jets. He said that he wanted to go to a better team. He was willing to take less money to go to a better team. He didn't want to go to a losing team. I, I don't blame him. Another player that the Jets were interested in, especially the fans have been talking about him for a very long time now, Brandon Sheriff. He got franchise tagged. He's out. So the Jets could target Joe Thune from New England. He's going to be the most expensive option. He's going to be the best offensive lineman in free agency. The Jets were very aggressive trying to get him last year in free agency. New England obviously franchise tagged him last year. That's not the case this year. Another target that the Jets could potentially look at is Lions wide receiver Kenny Galloway. I think Kenny Galloway now is the best wide receiver in free agency now that he's not tagged. And another one is Emmanuel Sanders. He was released today from the Saints. Kenny Galloway, I value over Sanders. I'd rather have Kenny Galloway. He's a little bit younger. And I just think that he's more of a fit for the Jets system this year. But the Jets have to sign at least one big free agent. They have to. We can't just not build through free agency. I understand building through the draft. That's priority number one. I understand that. But free agency is here to help us. Take advantage of the resource. There's a lot of good players, especially this year, in free agency that the Jets could potentially go after. And I think it's going to be Joe Thune. We're going to have to pay a lot of money for Joe Thune. That's the only thing. He's going to be expensive. A lot of teams want him. But the Jets could offer the most behind Jacksonville. The Jets could offer the most. The Jets, the ball's really in the Jets' court. The Jets, realistically, can go after whoever they want. Obviously, they can't sign everybody. Can't get everybody. But they can really go after whoever they want. You want a big player? What are you willing to give up for him? You want Deshaun Watson? How many picks are you willing to give up? You want Joe Thune? What are you willing to sign him to? The Jets have $69.3 million in cap space. That's the second most in the NFL right behind the Jacksonville Jaguars. And that's also including Marcus May's franchise tag. And they're still cutting more players. Potentially, Jamison Crowder is getting cut. That's going to save you like uh, $10 million right there. A couple other guys are going to be getting cut. The Jets are really in the driver's seat to get whoever they want. I'm really glad that they put the franchise tag on Marcus May. Worst case scenario, it doesn't work out. We draft somebody. And then we have to see potentially who's in free agency next year. Maybe we don't have to draft somebody. Maybe we could sign somebody in free agency next year. 
But that's going to wrap it up for me. Pretty quick episode this week of the Everything NYJ podcast. It's just a lot of big news. You know, Marcus May getting franchise tagged. That's pretty big news. But uh, let me know who you guys think the Jets should target in free agency. Do you guys agree with Marcus May being franchise tagged or not? Are you guys willing to franchise tag Marcus May maybe next year? Or do you want to give him that big contract? Let me know what you guys think. If you have any fan questions, tweet them to me at EverythingNYJ. Go follow me on Twitter at EverythingNYJ. I'll follow you back. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good night. And as always, go Jets.